Hey Lena, are you going to the Docker Seattle meetup tonight? I was actually thinking about it. It sounds really cool. I'm super excited because, as you know, the founders of Kubernetes are all going to be there tonight. Wow, that's great. Speaking of Kubernetes, uh, so I've been working with Spark recently for some large-scale data processing. And uh, since the most recent version of Spark, uh, which is 2.3.0, you can use Kubernetes as a scheduler for Spark jobs. And I'm super excited about it because previously uh, it was possible to use uh, Yarn or Apache Mesos or standalone mode to do the job submission. But now I can actually use Kubernetes, which is really cool. Very cool. I'm excited uh, whenever there's anything with Kubernetes. But but what exactly <laughs> is this Spark thing? Like I don't know much about it, so can you explain? Uh -huh, okay. Uh, maybe you've heard of uh, Hadoop MapReduce. Yeah. Okay. So on a high level, uh, Hadoop MapReduce basically takes a job and splits it into uh, multiple tasks and sends them to different nodes. Mm -hmm. And on these nodes, the actual computation occurs. And then we eventually get the results back. So Spark is really similar to that. Uh, it has similar goal. It is also like an open source distributed computing framework uh, for near real-time processing, but it's much, much faster than MapReduce uh, because it mostly processes data in memory. And it also has uh, the model of uh, directed acyclic graph where it splits the computation into stages. And this way it can optimize the execution plan to minimize shuffling data around and stuff like this. Uh, so, oh, and also you can use it for many other things like streaming data with a Spark structure streaming or machine learning even with MLlib and like ETL tasks and stuff like yeah, that. Very cool. And, and I know about Hadoop jobs, but how do I actually submit something with Spark? Okay, so with Spark, you basically have a usual regular project written in either Java or Scala or Python. And then you have an archive, like a jar file or a zip file or an egg file. And then you use a Spark submit command mm -hmm. to send the job for execution. That, that's a binary provided by um, Spark, part of Spark? Spark yes, submit. yes. So if you clone the Spark repo itself and go to the bin folder uh, or a directory, then you will find this uh, command there. Very cool. And um, can you explain a bit more exactly how Spark then works with Kubernetes, so how that works in the cluster? Yes. So after you uh, want to execute the Spark submit, Spark will create a driver and executors. So driver is like a central coordinator. Uh, for a job, and executors are workers that will perform the job itself. And then the results will be gathered on the driver, and we will be able to access the results after the job is completed. Okay, very cool. And um, well, why don't we take a look? Can you show us how this stuff works? Or? Of course, I have a really short example. Very cool. So let me show you this example of a Spark job. Um, actually, before we do that, it's a bit cold for me. Shall we go um, inside? Sure, In let's fact, do that. In um, fact, we have this awesome treehouse right here. Yeah, and we have several of them uh, in different locations on campus. So I've can... actually never gotten to use them, so I'm excited to go. Yeah, let's go try that. You see, it's nice inside. So here is my Spark job. Uh, it's a Scala project. Mm -hmm. And I have necessary dependencies imported, like Spark SQL. Uh, 2.3.0, and then Spark. Can, um, can you show me really quick uh, your project again? Uh, what what yeah. does the project do? So the project is uh, calculating the pi number. Okay, that's awesome because today is pi day. Exactly. <laughs> so um, yeah, the simple calculation using the Spark context parallelize, um, and I have a special plugin that can transform the project into a jar, uh, which we need because when we submit Spark jobs, we uh, need to have like a package that we can uh, send. And in case of the recent version of Spark uh, with Kubernetes, we can either publicly upload this jar to mm -hmm. some uh, storage or prepackage it into a Spark container image that we're going to use. So before we actually submit the job, mm -hmm. here are quite a few steps that I've done uh, to make sure that everything is ready for the Spark job. So I've created a Kubernetes cluster. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've also... You need your cube config and everything to access the cluster. Exactly. Like. Just do a get credentials command and then you'll be immediately connected to your cluster. And then uh, I need to clone and build the Spark source 
because uh, I need to build and push the Spark Docker image mm -hmm. and specify it when I execute the Spark submit command. So I've used Azure Container Registry to store the image and I put the tag on it. Uh, I also correctly authenticated my uh, AKS cluster to be able to read from the ACR. Because the private registry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, as I uh, told you, I've also built the jar file and uh, published it to Azure Storage. Mm -hmm. So now we can actually submit the job. And uh, to submit it, we need to know our Kubernetes master uh, endpoint. Mm -hmm. So, and we can do uh, kubectl cluster info to find it out. So I just put it into kubemaster variable because it's really convenient. And this is the most interesting code. Yeah, that's where the magic happens. Exactly. Uh, so let's do the command line operation here. I'm located in the Spark source directory. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's run this command. It, it has many parameters, so you can see that it accepts the master endpoint, mm -hmm. like the class name. And that is the, the, the class, the, um, the Scala class to execute from your job file, right? Yes, yeah. exactly. And then we also can put number of executor instances. Mm -hmm. Uh, if we don't put it, uh, Spark will just determine itself uh, how many it needs. And uh, here is the container image that we just built and uh, the uh, dependencies in a jar file on Azure Storage. But you can use any storage. Okay, so when we... Let's run this. Yeah, let's run this. Um, let's wait till it starts execution. Okay, so it's pending. Cool. And now what we can do is we can check the status of pods. Ah, so these executors actually pods and Kubernetes. Yeah, exactly. So the driver is running now, and we have five executors starting to initialize. So they're still initializing. Let's check what's the job. So it's running. And uh, what does the driver do? What functionality does it provide? It basically uh, is responsible for coordinating the job, and uh, it gathers the result output. So and can it also show me while it's still pending how I would view like what's going exactly. on? Exactly. Yeah. So as you see now it's completed, and we can access the driver uh, logs using the kubectl logs command and the driver name, and we see that here is the pi uh, result. So this is the output of the job, and this is <coughs> the output of the scheduling uh, mm -hmm. that the driver does, and then eventually after the job is completed. We can check that here, so it's succeeded. And if we show pods again, we see that they are terminating, and eventually there is not going to be any executor here, mm -hmm. and just the driver in a completed state. And, <coughs> sorry, this job, it was really fast, but if, there, if it were like taking a long time, yeah. um, is there something else where you can see the status? Or? Yeah, uh, actually there is a Spark UI. For longer jobs, it's convenient to do uh, like a port forwarding on your local host mm -hmm. so that you can open up the Spark UI and see the job stages. And, and that's part of the driver? Yes, okay. it, this is stored in the driver. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. Awesome. All right, awesome. Thanks for showing me this. You're welcome. And actually, if you want to know more information about this, you can check out Spark documentation or uh, our Microsoft documentation on how to run Spark job with AKS. So at aka.ms slash spark dash job. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks.